The new day starts in the tropical rainforests of Madagascar. Piercing voices resonate among the treetops as the fog slowly disappears. A few kilometers away, somebody is listening. This concert has a clear message. It is a territorial call. A family group of Indris, the largest living lemurs, are preparing themselves for a response. They need to let the others know that this is their area in the forest. What is about to come can only be heard in Madagascar, the island with amazingly diverse nature. Lemurs, as a group, cannot be found anywhere else on Earth. Whole Indri families call together several times per day. The sound can be heard even four kilometers away. This spectacular scene is often shown in documentaries. Many people still think that Madagascar is an island covered with green and lush forests. Fortunately, that is not true anymore. About 90% of the original forest coverage was lost after the arrival of humans about 2,000 years ago. Indris and thousands of other species from this biodiversity hotspot are threatened by extinction. In most of Madagascar, the landscape looks barren and struggles with erosion and the occurrence of invasive plant and animal species. However, there are still places where the original ecosystems still occur. The eastern part of the island receives most of its humidity from the Indian Ocean, so it was covered by lowland and montane rainforest in the past. Madagascar is well known not only for lemurs. Another diverse and famous group of vertebrates living here are chameleons. These lizards have very specialized bodies for movement in the trees and they are also excellent insect hunters. Their main weapon is the tongue. It consists of the sticky pad at the end, accelerator muscles which launch it and the retractor muscles. Once the accelerator muscles begin to contract, 
the tongue is launched off a bone called the hyoid. This is the Parsons chameleon, one of the biggest and heaviest species in the world. It can grow up to 68 centimeters. Amazingly, its tongue can be almost two times longer than its body, excluding the tail. Madagascar is the center of diversity of chameleons with almost 100 species already described, which is about half of the world's known species for this group. Many of them are found only in very isolated remaining natural habitats. These reptiles are very variable in size. In the same rainforest, you can find giants and also dwarfs. Genus Bruxia comprises of miniature chameleons, which are perfectly camouflaged in the leaf litter. They are usually only a few centimeters long. Due to their secretive lifestyle, not much is known about them. Rainforests have several layers, and each of them is inhabited by some specialized species. In the treetops, Indras are already finished their territorial behavior, and now it is time to feed. These lemurs need a wide variety of leaves from different rainforest trees in their diet. Thus they never survive in captivity, as no zoo can provide the same quality of food. Another important thing in the life of the Indri is space. As forests are shrinking, groups of Indris have smaller territories, and they become stressed because of close encounters with other groups. This youngster is going to learn how to be an injury, but the question is if the forest where it lives will still be big enough. Indris reach sexual maturity between the ages of seven and nine. Females give birth every second or third year, so the population of this species grows slowly. Apart from Indri, Madagascar is home to about 100 species of lemurs from several families, and new species are still described frequently. The island is separated from any other landmass for 88 million years. When lemurs arrive to Madagascar, which probably happened, after they rafted on floating vegetation moved by ocean currents from Africa. They evolved rapidly and adapted to multiple empty ecological niches. Evolving in isolation also means that they are very vulnerable to changes around them. Sifakas, 
are closely related to injury and most of them are very endangered. The biggest species is the diadem sifaka. Some individuals in this group have radio collars so researchers can monitor their movement. Diadem sifakas share the habitat with injury and are also herbivores. They also live in family groups but defend their territory in a different way by scent marking. Another big lima species living in rainforests is the black and white ruffed lima. In contrast to Indri and Sifakas, this lima is mostly frugivorous. Black and white ruffed lemurs are highly vocal and communicate together a lot. If they feel threatened, they use a very significant alarm call. Early biologists name primates on Madagascar lemurs because the calls of some species reminded them of the cries of ancient Roman spirits of the dead, Lemures. When the night comes, different endemic animals start to be active. Some of them have been perfectly camouflaged during the day, such as this leaf-tailed gecko. These geckos live only in forests of Madagascar and are famous for their cryptic coloration. Some species have a flap of skin which they lay against the tree to make their outline practically invisible. The ability to change the skin colour to match the surroundings enables these reptiles to blend in with many places of the forest. Leaf-tailed geckos are active at night and hunt insects. Similarly to most animals on Madagascar, they are threatened by habitat destruction. The island is also home to the world's largest nocturnal primate. Ai Ai is a very specialized lima which fills the empty niche of woodpeckers as it is capable of penetrating the wood to find invertebrates within. The third finger is much thinner than others and is used for tapping on the wood. Big ears help Ai Ai to hear the sounds of grubs hidden inside. Then it makes a hole in the wood with its powerful incisors. The long, fourth finger finally helps it to get the food out.
Although Ai is not dangerous to humans, it is considered evil by locals and killed on sight. Some say the appearance of an Ai in a village predicts the death of a villager, and the only way to prevent this is to kill it. This lima faces even more threats than habitat destruction. Many diurnal animals sleep on the branches at various heights, like birds and chameleons. Frogs, on the other hand, become active after darkness. Their diversity in Madagascar is spectacular. Apart from frogs, some mammals other than Ai are foraging around. One of them is the greater hedgehog, Tenrek. Despite its amazing resemblance to hedgehog, it is not related to it. Tenreks are endemic animals which belong to the mammalian clade of Afrotheria. It comprises of mammals belonging to groups living in Africa or of African origin. For example, elephants, hyraxes, sea cows or aardvark. Tenreks in Madagascar fill the empty niche which is occupied elsewhere by insectivores like hedgehogs and shrews. Evolution took strange directions also in snakes on this island. The Malagasy leaf-nosed snake is resting in a very uncommon position, just hanging head down. A day gecko moving after darkness caught the attention of the predator. It is going to see if it can get an extra meal this night. But Malagasy leaf-nosed snake usually moves very slowly and uses its camouflage to get close to its prey. This time, Gecko moves too far away and it seems like both reptiles will spend this night peacefully. The snout of this snake is sharp, so it is a male. Females have a leaf-shaped snout, and this species belongs to few snakes in the world with sexual dimorphism. Tropical rainforests are disappearing fast from Madagascar. Primary causes of forest loss are slash and burn practices for agricultural land and for pasture, selective logging for precious woods or construction material, the collection of wood for charcoal production and forest clearing for mining. A big problem for decades is the illegal logging. The unique natural heritage of this island is replaced in many areas by paddy fields. 
In Madagascar, the average annual consumption of rice is one of the largest in the world. Each year, new areas of forest need to be burned to make space for bigger fields. Places with high biodiversity on the island are nowadays mostly restricted to protected areas. The vast majority of about 90% of Madagascar's fauna and flora is endemic. And as we already demonstrated with a few examples, does not cope well with the environment destroyed by human activities. Life is not easy in Madagascar, and agriculture or selling charcoal generates the only possible income for many people. This is not only a problem in wet regions, but also in dry, semi-arid western and southern Madagascar. Some very unique ecosystems are native here, such as the Madagascar dry deciduous forests, Madagascar succulent woodlands, and Madagascar spiny forest. These belong to the most endangered ecosystems on our planet. The spiny forest ecoregion contains an outstanding proportion of endemic plant species. It is dominated by massive baobabs and octopus trees. These are spiny succulent shrubs and trees from 2 to 20 meters tall, with thick water storing stems and leaves that are deciduous in the long dry season. Even this harsh environment was successfully inhabited by lemurs. These are Veriox sifakas. They are able to move on the spiny octopus trees and feed on their leaves. Amazingly, they never drink and get all the water from their food. The view on the spiny forest from above is really depressing. Just tiny fractions survived in many regions and only thanks to the protection in reserves and national parks. Huge areas are covered by sisal plantations. This environment is not inhabitable for most endemic species. Sisal production has climbed in recent years due to the demand for biodegradable packaging. Thus, an unintended result of the adoption of more environmentally friendly packaging is the destruction of endemic ecosystems. When sifakas want to move somewhere else, they need to cross areas where their natural forests already disappeared. Luckily, they are adapted to movement on the ground. Veriox sifaka is known as the dancing lemur for the way it moves across open ground. The group usually crosses open spaces together. They jump on their hind legs and hold their arms up for balancing. The spiny forest slowly changes into a gallery forest near the river, 
which belongs to a local private reserve. Protected areas are one of the last places where endemic fauna and flora still survives in healthy numbers in southern Madagascar. Sifakas feed in the morning and afternoon, and during the heat of the day, they rest. They eat leaves, fruits, seeds and flowers. When the group has young babies, the adults always keep an eye out for predators. Safakas are diurnal, and with the coming darkness, they will find a place to sleep. White-footed sportive lemurs, however, spent the day resting in octopus trees and will slowly become active. The basic social unit of this species is a mother and her offspring. Males are solitary and have territories that will overlap those of one or more females. Spiny forest is also home to other interesting animal species. Some of them, like invertebrates and reptiles, are mainly active during the rainy season, and they tend to be hidden during long dry periods. When the Madagascan nightjar, which is a nocturnal bird, starts to fly around, it is clear that night is coming. Night is the time when many cold-blooded animals are on the move. The temperature is too high for them during the heat of the day. There are no venomous snakes on this island which would be dangerous for humans. Some of them have rear fangs, but their toxins only work on their prey, like lizards or frogs. Dry deciduous and spiny forests have different reptile fauna from tropical rainforests. Madagascar ground geckos are typical for dry habitats. Also, different chameleon species live here.
Most birds are sleeping in the night, but owls search for prey. Gray mouse lemurs are so tiny that they can become a target. These tiny primates are omnivores and eat mostly fruit and insects. Sportive lemurs are vegetarians and feed on leaves. Mornings are chilly in the gallery forest. Ringtail lemurs are waking up after a night spent in the tree. These are probably the most famous lemurs of Madagascar. They are highly social and can live in groups of up to 30 individuals. When the sun starts to shine into the treetops, they like to bask. Malagasy paradise flycatchers hunt insects nearby. Males have long tail feathers, which are not present in females. Sun starts to shine on the ground and ring-tailed lemurs come down from the trees. They spend lots of time on the ground. It is the most terrestrial lemur species spending as much as 30% of its time on the ground. The group faces the sun sitting in what is frequently described as sun-worshipping posture or lotus position. However, they sit with their legs extended outward, not cross-legged. Unlike sifakas, ring-tailed lemurs walk on four legs on the ground. They are well known for their movement with raised tails. After basking, it is time to find some food. These lemurs are quite adaptive and will eat even invasive plants like Aponsia, which come originally from Central America. When available, Tamarind tree makes up as much as 50% of their diet, especially during the dry winter season. Dry deciduous forest is also home to other diurnal vertebrates. One of the rarest is the radiated tortoise. These tortoises are critically endangered due to habitat loss, being poached for food and being overexploited in the pet trade. They can survive in the driest regions of Madagascar and are known to live very long, more than 150 years. Radiated tortoise is a grazer and can eat also the succulent plants. The carapace of the radiated tortoise is brilliantly marked 
with yellow lines radiating from the center of each dark plate of the shell, hence its name. While the tortoise is feeding on the ground, the warty chameleon hunts insects in the trees. None of these reptiles is having much attention from feeding lemurs. But there is one reptile which is a top predator in this forest. Dumeril's boa is one of the biggest snakes on the island, and it is a powerful constrictor. Its diet consists of small animals, including lemurs. It is found in semi-arid habitats in the south and southwest of Madagascar. The closest relatives of Dumeril's boa live in Africa and South America. This is caused by the fact that southern continents together formed the Gondwana supercontinent in the Jurassic period, and then they started to split. Boas remain the apex predators in Madagascar and South America. However, in Africa, they were replaced by pythons. Dumeril's boas tend to be hidden in mammal burrows or fallen tree trunks during the dry season. Similar to other endemic animals, they are becoming rare. To preserve this unique and fragile ecosystem, the complete food chain represented by predators, prey and producer organisms needs to remain untouched. The view from the downtown of Madagascar's capital city, Antananarivo, offers not a very optimistic looking scenery. Although this is the economic center of the island, the signs of extreme poverty are visible in each direction from above. Out of 2.6 million people living in the capital and the surrounding areas, more than one million lack access to adequate water and sanitation facilities. Access to electricity remains low, with about 20% of the total population having access to this form of modern energy. These are the numbers for Antananarivo. The rest of the island is mostly in a worse situation. While most of the world gave up making bricks by hand in the late 1800s, it remains in Madagascar as a job that provides much needed income for populations with limited access to resources. Over 75% of Madagascar's population lived below the extreme poverty line in 2019. Since 2015, the World Bank has defined extreme poverty as people living on $1.90 or less a day. What is the future of young generations growing up in Madagascar? The population has increased from 15.7 million people in 2000 
to almost 27.7 million people in 2020. More people need more space for living and it means less space for nature. The last remaining patches of wilderness on this island are under huge and constant pressure. The first step to save nature in Madagascar is to fight the poverty among local people. It is estimated that Madagascar will suffer a loss of 30% of its species by the end of the 21st century if the Malagasy society continues its activities at the current rate. In 2020, the island lost its important revenue from tourism because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Sustainable tourism can be the solution for preserving the unique biodiversity of Madagascar and the country can also grow economically. Only the future will show if it is already too late to save the nature of this amazing island. Maintaining biodiversity on Earth is one of the most important challenges allowing successful survival of humankind in the future. The story of Madagascar might still be the worst or best example of how we cared. <laughs>